up Yard Freakos and thanks for joining me on this video. So today I wanted to do a follow on video to uh, me taking care of my sawed webworm problem here. And um, I was thinking about it, you know, over the last couple of days and there's a trick that I remembered from when I was doing lawn care in high school that I want to tell you guys about and maybe you might find intriguing. So in my previous video, like I said, I couldn't use pesticides in my yard. It's just not an option at this point right now. So I was thinking, I was like, well, how can I get irritate if not somehow kill these bugs off without, you know, technically using a pesticide? And I finally remembered this trick I learned back in high school from my uncle who did lawn care for years. And it's tobacco juice. So I hope that has you intrigued. So let's talk about why I learned this trick and then I will then go into detail on how it works and then we'll uh, go ahead and use this tobacco juice to be able to uh, take out the sob webworms. This also works well on June bug worm or grubs if you want to use that as well. Okay so the way I learned this trick was um, I was in high school and I was mowing this lady's yard and she's like pretty much one of the only hippies in West Texas and she didn't want me to use pesticides, she barely wanted me to use fertilizer I convinced her to use Morganite because I told her, hey, she's gonna end up in a landfill anyway. So that kind of convinced her to use that. But uh, she didn't want me to use pesticides at all. And she was having a massive June bug problem. And, you know, I was just doing what I kind of did in my first video. I was just throwing down as much seed as possible, trying to get it re to reestablish, give these June bugs something else to munch on. And, you know, just be able to not let these things take out massive amounts of her yard. And so my uncle came and visited me one day, or come visited the family one day, and I was telling him about this, and he said, well, why don't you just use tobacco juice? And uh, I was like, what? And it's kind of funny, because my uncle dips all the time. He's been doing it for years. And he said uh, what he would do when he had jump, gym bug problems when he was mowing uh, lawns for people is he would take the uh, the uh, used tobacco juice, basically his spit, you know, the spit with tobacco it, tobacco stuff in it, and he would mix it with a little bit of water and then just pour it onto the ground, and sure enough, the June bugs would go away. And he said, yeah, he'd just do that for years. It was basically free, you know, free pesticides, and he didn't see anything wrong with it because uh, nicotine is, you know, produced naturally by plants. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, why would I consider nicotine not to be a pesticide, but other pest, you know, you know, not a pesticide. So the thing is, is, you know, I'm sure most of you know, uh, nicotine is produced by tobacco plants. And the reason tobacco plants, you know, naturally produce nicotine is because nicotine is actually a form of pesticide. It keeps other bugs from attacking the plant. And I don't know the, you know, science behind it exactly, but you know, the same reason why nicotine affects people is kind of the same way it affects bugs, bugs nervous systems, but on a ma much more massive level. And that's the reason why tobacco plants produce this stuff. Now, you may have heard of this before, but a lot of today's pesticides are actually based around the chemistry of the nicotine mo molecule. You may have heard of them, they're called neonicotinoids. And basically what scientists did is like, okay, nicotine, natural, but it's not as effective as we would like. Cause you know, if it was really effective, you would just think, okay, you know, like all the parts of the tobacco plant, for example, that weren't leaves, why don't, wouldn't they just shred those up and then somehow distill the nicotine out of them and use that as a pesticide for, you know, crops, right? But since the nicotine isn't powerful enough, they were like, well, this molecule of nicotine is really effective but we need something better. And so, you know, just doing their chemistry things, uh, they figured out that neonicotinoids, which act a lot like nicotine, but, prob but even more powerfully. Now, I'm not really going to uh, go into the politics of neonicotinoids. I will say, like, for example, the EU has banned neonicotinoids because of bees. They think it's affecting the bees and all that stuff. I'm not against using pesticides in their time and place. Um, but if I can avoid using them, I will. And I don't see nicotine as like a shortcut or as um, being hypocritical in that regard because with neonicotinoids, um, nature has a, lot, a really hard time breaking them down, uh, you know, once they've been used on the crops. Well, like once they get into the soil, there's really, are the 
soil bacteria and micro, you know, microbes have a hard time breaking it down, but with nicotine, it really does. They really don't. It just, you know, it's a natural part of the tobacco plant and it breaks down just around like the rest of it. So that's why I don't have a problem with using it this time. Okay, so now that we explained why nicotine works the way it does, let's get started here. So as opposed to my uncle just, you know, using his used uh, spit juice, I'm not gonna be doing that. I'll be taking the easy way out. So I'm gonna be using regular Copenhagen and I've got the one in pouches just to keep, you know, the uh, tobacco uh, shavings from, you know, cut, you know, clogging up the can and stuff like that. But this should allow the same thing. So I'm just gonna take this put Copenhagen, put it in the can, fill it up with water, let it soak for a few hours, and then we'll get started. Oh man, <laughs> you know I don't partake in this stuff anymore, uh, but I will say if it weren't for Copenhagen, I would never have been able to get through all the late nights I did taking thermodynamics back in college. So Copenhagen, thank you, but not anymore. No more for ingesting, just for uh, get killing grubs. So the uh, can of water with the uh, Copenhagen in it has been now uh, soaking for at least a few hours here. So look, I'm not sure if that's coming out in the um, video or not, but it's definitely brown. So this is basically Copenhagen tea at this point, and this is going to give the eviction notice to the sob sod worms here. So let's get started. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought t using tobacco juice would be a clever way to show you guys how to take out some pesky bugs in the yard, so I hope you appreciate it. With that said, you have a good week. Take it easy. Hit the subscribe button. Feel free to comment, and I'll catch you in the next video.